Good morning, everyone. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining me. Did you feel that earthquake there in Virginia late last night at about 1046 p.m.? It had a depth of about 3.1 miles or 5 kilometers. This earthquake was associated and probably related to the Hylus fault zone. I got it drawn out in red here. It's what's considered an interplate earthquake. It runs roughly parallel to the Blue Ridge Mountains, extending from the northwest near the Sheridona Valley to the southeast towards the Piedmont region. Large interplate earthquakes are very possible. Back in 2011, uh, let me find it up here. There we go. There was a magnitude 5.8 earthquake. And I got two fault zones drawn out here. Also, uh, these are ancient fault zones. The 2011 Virginia earthquake uh, was the largest earthquake recorded in Virginia in over a century. While the epicenter of the 2011 earthquake was near Mineral, Virginia, which is in a different seismic zone. Um, that is the Central Virginia seismic zone. The Hayes Fault zone is in the proximity of the affected area. Let me come back down. Okay, which would be right there. Earthquake reports are still coming in to USGS Did You Feel It website. 372 people said they felt this earthquake. USGS gave it an intensity level of 4 which means it was felt indoors by many people, outdoors by a few. At night, they would have been woken up. Dishes, windows, doors were rattling. Automobiles would have been rocking noticeably. Here's the felt report map, and it looks like it was felt probably as far. Well, it doesn't give me a location, but here we got the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains. Um... Tazewell is up north. Um, Galax is over here on the right. And that's near the uh, Virginia-North Carolina border. Okay. Then we got another report there. But most of them came from within this location. We got intensity level 4 there. One response. Another intensity level 4. Uh, let's see. Close to the epicenter. Okay, intensity level 3, 120 reports. We got one over here on the right. Doesn't give me a location. I'll have to zoom in so you can see. Okay, so we got 47 from this location, 38 from there, 11 there, and it kind of peters out. Looks like most of the reports, 120 we're close to the epicenter. Let's see, what do we got above it? 6, 15, 54. So it looks like close to the uh, elementary school. Um, that's where most of the reports came out, came from. And then we got Elmont. I was able to download one monitor, which is up there by Mineral City. And this here is that earthquake that came in last night. There's its seismic signature. Um, they're not reporting any aftershocks, but it does look like there was another one right here. We'll go to its seismic signature. And we'll compare it to this one here. It might not be. Um, that's a slow moving tremor. I've talked about those. And then we got another one here. Um, it stopped working sometime last night. I downloaded this data, um, the location, the monitor last night, and it stopped working. So I don't know. But these look like slow-moving tremors that have occurred after this uh, magnitude 2.1 earthquake. Let me make this a little bit bigger, and I'll bring it down for you. You know, see, uh, yeah, we got, yeah slow moving tremors going on you can see the seismic activity through here yeah and that is one really long slow moving tremor tremor now that was at 1305 so um about 
9.05 a.m. local time. That's today. We do have a little one here. Yeah, we got a small one right there. Um, 14.03. That would have been at about 10.03. Maybe it's still working. Let's see. Uh, 14.54. This is all the data that I pulled in this morning. So maybe it is still working. I thought it stopped working on me, for me. All right. And I'll bring it up. Okay, so we got this one right here. Yeah, that's the 2.1. But I get almost a magnitude 3.0. Um, I really shortened up the seismic wave. And I get a magnitude 2.98. So they downgraded this earthquake greatly. I ended the seismic signature right there because it kind of went flat line. But if I come over, hopefully it doesn't go smaller. You can see how it continued to rattle. And we'll go back to the uh, spectrogram. But that is where I ended it, right there. Yeah, so it's closer to a magnitude 3. So if you're interested in more information about the Piedmont Seismic Zone, it is a region in the um, eastern United States known for occasional seismic activity. It is situated along uh, the eastern edge of the Appalachian Mountains, extending from Alabama to New Jersey. Remember, we had that New Jersey earthquake last week. Um, a lot of damage. Gas lines were broken, several homes slid off their foundations. The formation of the Piedmont Seismic Zone is closely tied to the geological history of the Appalachian Mountains and the tectonic process that shaped the region. Um, the Appalachian Mountains were formed during the collision of the North American and African tectonic plates. When I covered that earthquake there in New Jersey, let me bring this out, there's Probably close to all the earthquakes. I haven't put anything in for the last 24 hours for New Jersey. But there's a lot of earthquakes. And I talked about how this is an area of an ancient rift zone. Um, because of the formation of the continent with the collision of the African plate. But supposedly this rift zone is not part. Let me go back down. Of where these recent earthquakes were happening. It could be. Um, geology is about 50 years behind in other sciences, so I don't know. I did show how the rift zone extends all the way down to Florida, so it could be part of that rift zone, but I couldn't find any um, recent data showing evidence of that. What they believe now is that the Piedmont seismic zone is not considered a rift zone in the traditional sense of plate tectonics. Instead, it is a region characterized by faults and fractures within the Piedmont region of the eastern United States associated with the tectonic process that formed the Appalachian Mountains. During the collision of the North American and African plate, rift zones and faults developed in the Earth's crust. These faults and fractures persisted after the initial collision, allowing for the accumulation of stress and occasional release of energy in the form of earthquakes. But I've talked about how as the Earth's magnetic field weakens, the continents are now starting to move again. And we got um, the Atlantic plate, which is part of the former um, African plate. Yeah, everything is starting to move and we're seeing more and more earthquakes and larger earthquakes and earthquakes in diverse places. So, until more research is done, the Halas Fault Zone in central Virginia is considered an interplate seismic zone, meaning it is located with the North American tectonic plate. Intraplate earthquakes in this region can be caused by a variety of factors, including ancient faults, residue stress, and crustal deformation. They still have the potential of creating large earthquakes such as the 2011 5.8. So everyone should be prepared. They should have a plan. Uh, they should do things to their home to make them earthquake safe. And as always, after a large earthquake, such as what happened up there by New Jersey, 
check for broken water lines check for um, cracked leaked leaking gas lines things like that have a wrench close by to where you can shut off your gas and water that's very important have things removed that could fall on you when you're sitting on your couch or in a chair or by your bed when you're sleeping at night yeah you, know, you don't want those things to fall on top of you have bookcase um, secured to the wall hot water heater secured so did you feel this earthquake last night if so please put your information down below how long did it last uh, did you hear like a boom before the earthquake um, yeah what direction did it feel like it traveled from thank you very much for watching please like share and subscribe and I'll talk to you later God bless you